In this video, I'm going to introduce some of the work undertaken at the University of Kent in the area of image forensics, specifically the identification of image duplication in papers in the biosciences. This work is a collaboration between Dr. Jeremy Rossman in the School of Biosciences, Professor Julio Hernandez Castro and myself, David Barnes, both in the School of Computing. The first stage is to extract the figure images from the PDF version of a paper. In this example here, what we're going to work with, we've got some charts, some text, and some images of which we are going to be interested and want to, to analyse. Moving to the programme that's going to perform the analysis, the first stage is to extract figures from a PDF version of the paper, and this is the one that we were just looking at. Some processing is required initially to extract the images, and then we're given a viewer or an editor that allows us to browse through the images that have been extracted. Now only a subset of the images in the paper are really going to be of interest to us. So we can move through the set of images that have been extracted until we arrive at those that are going to be of interest to us. Once we find some images that we want to do some analysis on, we can mark out the areas that we want to analyse and make comparisons between. We also have an option here to apply some analysis of a page and seek to try and identify the individual or separate areas of interest that we might want to look at. So here you can see outlined in yellow with yellow crosses, various rectangular areas that the program thinks might be areas that we want. And we can individually select those if we wish, but we also have some heuristics built in that are accessible via the select option that allow us to then try and automatically select the remaining areas that we're interested in. And note that it rejected these other candidate areas over here as being insignificant or not of a type that's going to be of any particular interest to us. Now, individual images often contain annotations such as the figure lettering seen here. These annotations can be problematic during the analysis phase because identical annotations risk being identified as potential duplicate areas when the underlying images are completely unrelated. So we aim to mask out areas of annotations using the exclude option here. So we can either automatically, oh, sorry, manually outline the areas that we wish to exclude, or we have some options here that will look for the kind of annotations that are commonly found in images, such as areas of white text or black text, or simply text, so letters, words, and so on. In this particular set of images, we can see that all of the annotations are black, including this line down here that we're not interested in. And so if we select the black option for exclusion, we can see that all of the offending areas have been marked out in some way that the program then understands to mean don't look for matches within the areas marked out in this particular way. So if we now move on to the next figure, we can see that we have a similar set of rectangular areas that we want to take part in the image comparisons. So we'll go through exactly the same steps as we did with the previous set of images. We'll use the find option immediately. We'll use select to try and automatically select the areas of interest. And once again, we find that all eight areas of interest have been highlighted. Something you might notice is that each area has a colored rectangle around it. And so far, most of the areas highlighted have a light blue rectangle around them, but this one over here has a green rectangle. So the program has built into it some heuristics that attempt to identify the type of image that's being um, identified. The idea being that we only really want to compare like image types with like image types. So for instance, we would only want to compare one cell culture image with other cell culture images or one uh, histological sample with other histological samples. And the colors of the rectangles seek to identify to the uh, user of the program 
the types of areas that the program thinks these are. And in fact, in this case, um, the, the type has been in indicated incorrectly, but we can correct that very easily. We have a little um, drop down menu here uh, that we can then select, for instance, histology as being the type of this particular image to match the types of all the others. And now each one of these images would potentially be compared with each of the other histology images that are found within this paper. Once again, we want to exclude the annotations from these images. So we'll use the exclude option. Again, they're all black areas, so we can easily remove them in that way. There's one more set of images to be analyzed. They're found here. We'll go through exactly the same process. We'll use find, we'll use select, um, we'll use exclusion. We also have a, a little pop-up menu here that allows us uh, alternative access to the most common types of annotations, black. Now, one thing you might notice is that all of the image types that have been identified so far are all the same. But we can probably recognize as a human user of the program that these images here are unlikely to be duplications or contain areas of duplications with the other two sets of images that we looked at. And so rather than naively accepting that they're all basically the same uh, type of biological sample, we actually might want to choose a different set of groupings for these eight images compared to the previous set of 16 images. So we have an alternative way of designating the type of the images found in this particular figure. If we go up to the options and say, we don't really want to use specific names for the types of image, but we just want to use some generic groupings for image types. So we can switch like that and then say, I wish to designate all of the images in this particular figure as being of type group 01 where the group names are simply arbitrary groupings. We can then move back to this set of images here and say we'd like to designate these as being of a different grouping, group two, and we'll go back to the previous set and again say we want these all to be of group two as well. So the nature of the image does not particularly matter. We simply want to group images into classifications that will then allow us to make pairwise comparisons between individual images within the paper in order to look for potential image duplications. So now that we've identified all of the images of interest, uh, we can proceed to the analysis stage. So we'll save the settings that we've created there, move back to the main program interface, and now perform the analysis. The time required for the analysis depends upon the number of images which are in the paper and the number of pairwise comparisons that have to be made. So relatively few images in this paper, the analysis doesn't take particularly long. And then the next stage is to perform a review of the, the matches resulting from the comparisons. And we can see immediately that in this set of eight images, the program believes that there are similarities between this panel here and this panel here. And what it's done is drawn rectangular areas around the similar sections or the sections containing the most common elements uh, and draw lines of comparison between points that it considers to be to be matched. Now, by default, the program only shows uh, the most significant match points. We can actually look at all of the points of comparison that the program considers exist between these two subparts of the image and in fact there are 55 separate pairs of points between those two. Just remove those lines. Uh, to make it slightly easier to make the comparison we also have a zoom in option that allows us simply to focus on those particular panels where the similarities appear and we can see that if we look at subparts of the image such as this one over here it clearly responds to similarity over here or this grouping up here clearly corresponds to the grouping over there. One of the things that's uh, interesting about this image or this pair of images 
is that actually we don't find a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two images. So that's an issue that needs to be thought about as to why there are such strong similarities between this pair of images, but they're not absolutely identical within the areas that have been identified. But it's fairly clear that we've got two corresponding images here. If we zoom out to the page view, we note that there's another pair of images that the program uh, thinks would be worth looking at. So I can select next. Uh, and now we've got matches between panel B and panel D. And again, we can zoom in there and again see that there are significant sets of similarities between those two images. If we wish to see all of the points of comparison, we can bring up all lines. And there are 20 um, pairs of matching points that the, the program considers to be of interest there. Now remember that we actually have two sets of image types or two groups of image types. We've only looked so far at the comparisons in group one. If we move to group two, then we can see a panel here uh, where there appears to be similarities and we can zoom in once again and again we can see features in image A uh, that correspond fairly closely to features in image B uh, and the lines of comparison is drawn between and we can show all the all the comparisons and correspondences to make it slightly easier to uh, to make the comparison. So that's the analysis of, of one particular paper. And uh, as a review of what we've seen in this process, we've seen that the first stage is to extract the figure images from a PDF. The second stage is to identify the image areas of interest. This involves both allocating images to groupings and potentially masking areas we do not wish to be included in the matching process. The third stage is to analyze for matches. And the final stage is to review the potential matches to see whether they look to be significant or not. We're going to take a look at a, a second paper. And obviously in the second paper, we're going to be repeating many of the steps that we've seen already. Uh, so we'll go through those a little bit more, more quickly. Um, and actually in this case, we're not going to use a manual identification of the areas of interest. We're going to use one of the automated features that we have built into the program. Uh, that's a kind of a pre-analysis phase. Um, it allows us to attempt to find the figure areas automatically and also to classify them into the various image types. This is still a work in development, but it speeds the initial process of identifying potential areas of interest. So if we now start browsing through the figures that have been found within the paper, then there are an area of four blocks down here. We can see that the area analysis is not exactly perfect. It's included some of the numerical uh, annotations immediately above this image, but it's managed to separate out the four separate rows there for uh, separate analysis and comparison between them. Here we have uh, a number of fluorescent type images. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back from generic typing to uh, more specific typing. And I'm going to indicate that these are all images of fluorescent type. We want to exclude these annotation areas, which in this case are white rather than black. So let's use exclude white. And again, you can see we've removed or blocked out the various pieces of annotations from there. Move on to the next one. Again, we've got a set of, of fluorescent type images. Um, and we really only have those two sets of images within this particular paper. And that's really all that needs to be done in this particular case. We'll save uh, those settings. We'll perform the analysis. This takes a little longer because there were quite a large number of fluorescent images. And uh, so the number of pairwise comparisons that needed to be made 
is somewhat larger. Now we notice that this time the program thinks that there may be areas of similarity within one of the single blot images. These are easier to review via the zoom option. And these do look fairly similar areas, but we actually have to be fairly cautious when considering that uh, that blot images are similar because there is often quite a high degree of similarity between areas uh, within this type of image. So we're not really going to spend any any time looking in detail at, at, at those. In the fluorescence images, there are several areas that merit further examination. We won't spend any particular time on these, but uh, it just illustrates that we're also able to find similarities amongst images of, of different types. Let's look at one final paper. Once again, we'll seek to illustrate another feature of the um, analysis stage. So once again, we'll find the images automatically. Now, one of the things we notice, um, this might require examining the paper, but I think we can see it fairly obviously here, is that each set of rows, each set of images in a, a single row, uh, is actually a single image shown at different magnifications. So we have an enlargement of this area here, and then a further enlargement over here. And we've got the same going on in both of the other two rows. Now, clearly, we don't want to make comparisons between these three images because we will inevitably find similarities, but they're similarities that are, that are not significant, they're misleading. And so what we really like to do is to be able to indicate that uh, these three images should be treated as a group and we don't want to do any pairwise comparisons between them. And we have the ability to do that. We can... Uh, outline with a rectangular shape the fact that these three images are the same and a green box is placed around similar images to in indicate to the program that we're not going to be making pairwise comparisons within this row and similarly here and similarly here. Now that doesn't prevent an individual image in one of these sets from being compared with all of the other images in the other rows. It simply says don't compare this image with either of the other two in this grouping here. So that's something that becomes quite important, particularly where we have um, enlargements or sets of images which are merged together in a single image. And we'll see an example of that in a moment. So we move on to the next image. Uh, here we've got a number of annotations that we'd like to, to remove. So we can again use the exclude option and we want to exclude the black area. But we notice that actually that exclusion process has uh, excluded quite significant regions of a couple of these image areas down here. Now, in fact, that probably would not be significant for um, preventing identifications of, of matches were they to exist between these images, but it would be quite nice to actually uh, remove those incorrect blockages of annotations. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom in and highlight that particular area where we want to make some changes and I can unexclude the excluded areas and then by hand I can just indicate that it's that particular section of the image that I don't want to be included um, within the analysis and in fact we might decide that we don't really want those arrows either and I can draw areas around those, rectangles around those to prevent those from 
from being part of the um, comparison. And I might want to do the same with these arrows over here, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I think uh, that should be fine as it is. Move on to the next one. We've got uh, six images up here of a similar type. Down here, we've got a, a couple of fluorescent images. Uh, this one has the lighter yellow box. This one has an orange box indicating a slightly different image type. We probably want both of those to be the same type of image. So once again, I can zoom in on that particular area and then say, OK, I want these two to be of the same type. I'm going to make them both fluorescent. And I also want to exclude the white areas from those two images. And the fact that I'm working in a zoomed in area uh, means that that won't have affected these areas over here. So though there are probably white areas within these images, our exclusion of white within these images while zoomed in had no effect over here. So we can make individual annotations and type changes to uh, sections of a figure by zooming in. Uh, we've got a section of four fluorescent images here. And again, I'm going to just zoom in and recognize that these four are essentially images uh, that need to be merged. And so once again, I can use that grouping feature, draw a box to include all four images. There's a green boundary now placed around those. I also want to exclude the white areas because they're not significant for matching purposes. And then I can unzoom. We've missed a blot area here. It's probably easier simply just to, to draw that in. Move on to the next set of figures. We've got some blots identified there. Move on again. Down here, we've actually got a, a color that indicates that the analysis of the images suggested that this was an area we wouldn't be interested in. Uh, in fact, we are interested and I can just flip uh, the status of that and make sure that it's included. And again, I'll just draw outlines around these areas that we'd like to be part of the, the analysis. Once again, this has slightly been mistyped, so I can correct that using the pop-up menu. Uh, again, this is an area that was potentially thought to be of interest. It's got that purple designation to indicate that it's probably not of interest, and I can use the discard to throw away those areas are being not significant and another couple of significant areas down there and save those annotations perform the analysis quite a few images in this particular paper so this will probably take a significant period of time but I haven't attempted to to edit down the analysis time so that you can get a feel for exactly how long this process takes it's actually a relatively modest amount of time uh, given the number of pairwise comparisons that, that have to be made. And then shortly we'll get an indication that it's been analysed and we can review uh, the analysis. Once again, we've got potentially similar blot areas, but again, we don't regard that as significant in this context. Um, more interesting is this particular pairwise comparison we have over here. And one of the things to note is that the aspect ratio of the two areas are different. And the reason for that is that this area and this area, though similar, are at 90 degrees to one another. And note that the comparison lines actually have some crossings in. Now it's a lot easier to see if we zoom in because the zoom view actually reorientates one of the images in order to make sure that it aligns with the orientation of the other image. And once we have this, we can see shapes like this one over here, clear it would correspond to the shape over here. And this is a kind of image similarity that we want to make some further uh, analysis of, uh, reading the contents of the paper, just to see whether it's, it's benign or potentially a significant issue. So to summarise, we've looked at three papers. We've looked at the features that the programme provides. It's a mix of automated analysis and human intervention and, and human review. But 
As evidenced by the considerable number of previously unreported image duplications that we've been able to identify in published papers, we believe that our tool already has considerable potential to support publishers in identifying papers in which potential image duplications deserve further investigation. We fully acknowledge that the tool requires further development to reduce the degree of human intervention required in the process, and our hope is that publishers and others with an interest in image forensics and academic integrity will wish to work with this on this.